Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at the greatest Windows app ever created. Or actually, we're just going to look at Notepad, but it's been around for a while and it's gotten really good. It's coming up next. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott, and this week we're going to take a look at Notepad, the humble text editor that's been in Windows literally since the beginning. It debuted in the original Windows 1.0 in 1985. Uh, Before that, it was something called Multi-Tool Notepad uh, that Microsoft showed off in, I want to say, 1983, but then they stripped it down. It it was actually more full-featured originally, Um, but it became, you know, every operating system has to have a, a text editor. And so it does, but this, this simple app, this, uh, this text editor, right? It literally just works with dot text files. Doesn't have a lot of extra stuff going on, um, has improved dramatically over the years. And especially in recent years, um, if you follow me on the web, you may know that I work on my own version of a notepad type app. This is it, uh, called dot net pad. And I'm trying to keep up with what Microsoft is doing in notepad and it's, it's getting hard. The, the new version has tabs. It's got all this advanced functionality. So I thought we would take a look at that now because I think this is one of those things that just sits there in the background. No one really appreciates it, but actually Notepad's a pretty special app. So yes, plain text. Um, some of the changes that have occurred under the covers over the years, back in the late 1990s, maybe right around 2000, they added support for Unicode. So that means it supports all the world's languages. That's super important. Um, And it allows you to kind of go back and forth between different languages in the same app at the same time, which is cool. Before that, it was just ANSI. Um, Far more recently, and I want to say two, three years ago, they added support for uh, Unix and thus Mac OS style line endings. And so if you look down here in the corner, you'll see it says Windows CRLF, um, which is the window, the, the way that Windows text documents are formatted for line endings, and then UTF-8, uh, UTF-8 which is the uh, Unicode um, encoding format. But if I was to, let's see, I could save this thing. Um, I can't actually change the, well, actually, maybe I can't. No, yeah, I can, actually. So you can change the different uh, encoding formats here if you want to. Nobody does this, but it's 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 there because we have this subsystem for Linux, sorry, built into the system. And that allows you to interact with text documents. So that might be part um, of that operating system as well. Um, some of the changes I remember over time uh, in Windows NT, and I think in Windows 95 as well, they gave you the option to actually choose the font that you use. Um, the default font has changed at least three or four times over the years, there was a brief moment in the Windows uh, 10 timeframe where Microsoft was actually going to pull this thing out of Windows and put it in the store for people that wanted it. But then they started uh, improving it again. They realized we need to keep this in here. And in Windows 11, it is, like I said, it's improved dramatically. So you see this tab-based UI. You can add tabs, close tabs, etc. cetera. Um, they've kind of tightened up the UI. It's modern looking. Um, it supports dark and light mode. So I'm in... Uh, dark mode here in the system, but I could arbitrarily go to light mode or just dark or just use the system, which is what I usually leave it on. Um, it has a beautiful find and replace. Actually, I actually got to type something. So you bring up the find box. You can expand it for replace. Uh, kind of floats there. This is a very unique kind of modern UI. It's very nice. I haven't been able to duplicate it. <laughs> it's kind of irritating, uh, but it's really nice. It also does spell checking, right? So that's not a word. And I could uh, add that to the dictionary, but I won't because it's not a word. <laughs> but um, it has uh, uh, autocorrect, right? And so I, I haven't been able to trigger this today for some reason. But you know, when you type something like the quick brown font, you would think that one of these things would, uh, you know, but it doesn't. But it will, it will autocorrect uh, from time to time as well. But the most interesting thing it does to me, and this is something that I think confuses people, is that it supports what I think of as session state. So I have this document that I've not saved. You can see from this whole thing here that it's not saved. Now, in the old days, if I close this or if I tried to open a new document or whatever, it would say, hey, well, hold on a second. Do you want to save this thing? But now I close it and it just goes away. So it's like, did I lose that? No, because it saves the session state by default. It just brings it back. So it will keep doing this. I could add more of these. I could add uh, Windows, but it will keep coming back. So that's kind of interesting. Um, 
personally, I don't like it. I, I put this back to the default so you can see it. This is the way you will see it on your own system. Um, but I actually turn that off. I don't like it. Um, the other thing it does by default is it opens new documents and tabs, right? So if I go to the desktop and I open a text file like this, um, it adds it as a new tab instead of as a new window, right? Um, and you can, I'm just going to get rid of this thing, but you can, can oh, let me actually, let me do that. You can, he says, uh, change that. So you can have it open a new, a new window if you prefer that. That's actually the way I configure it myself personally, but um, this is an option now. So I think that it's, you know, it's pretty sophisticated. Okay, so that's all really interesting, um, but there's something else. So in Windows 11, 24H2, and it's only in certain countries. I know it's US, Canada, I want to say Western Europe, and then a few other countries, and it's going to expand over time. And it's only, I believe it's only English for now. They've added this thing here to the toolbar uh, called Rewrite. This is, this is actually really exciting. So this is a copilot-based AI tool that will look at the text that's in the do that you have in a document or that you've selected and then allow you to do different things with it. Now, obviously, for that to work, we have to have some text, right? So um, let me go into here. And I, I grabbed this article here that Laurent wrote on my site. It's reasonably short. I can copy it to the clipboard. There's no formatting here, by the way. But if there was, one of the best uses for Notepad is to paste. Actually, let me just do that first. Like paste something that has a bunch of stuff in it, right? So I could start like a, um, uh, a copy here. So I have got... Like this thing is a format, you know, this is a certain format. This is a hyperlink. These are little images. This is a big image. And when I paste that in, all I get is the text. It just strips everything out. Uh, Notepad is wonderful for that. Um, if you use it for anything, it might be just for that. It's really, really good for that. Uh, but here, I'm going to take this article. I don't recommend writing an article in Notepad, although, you know what? <laughs> it's probably getting pretty good. A little spelling mistake there. Um, okay, so now that we have some text... This thing lights up and you can see what the various options are, right? You can rewrite it. You can rewrite it in specific ways, make it shorter, make it longer, change the tone, formal, casual, inspirational, or humor, and then change the format. And this, this thing works amazingly well. If you think about what a typical tech blog has been for the past 20 years, uh, the, a human being somewhere in the world is probably reading a press release or an article or a blog that Microsoft or some other company has written, and then they rewrite it. And that's literally what this does. So in this case, I'll just click rewrite, rewrite. And you can see, you know, we got the AI pink, purple, blue, you know, the standard colors we always say. And then you get this rewritten version. Now to understand what's happening here, let's make this big so you can see it. I can't, re I can't move this thing, unfortunately, but the original here is about 2000 characters. And it says, Microsoft will have some surface for business news at the New York stop of its Microsoft AI tour on January 30, 2025. And then this first sentence is basically that first sentence, but just rewritten, right? Microsoft is set to share updates regarding surface for business during the New York leg of its Microsoft AI tour on January 30, 2025. Okay. So those two things say the same thing. Now, it's not always going to be perfect, right? Um, but it does a pretty good job. But here's where it gets really interesting. So that, that alone is pretty good. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Um, but you can also edit it for length, right? You can make it shorter or longer. So I'm going to replace the text so you can see what the difference is. It actually is just a couple of characters longer. So this is roughly the same size as it was before. So I'm going to go back to the original. And now this time I'm going to rewrite it to make it shorter, right? So same thing. It works on it, works on it. Um, again, a little over 2,000 words. So this is, it's not going to be a lot smaller. I'm going to cancel that. Let's get out of there. Discard it. Do a new one. And just paste in what I got. And so you can see it's 1,647 characters. So it's a little shorter. Um, I can pull that out. That's one of the fun things about tabs. You can kind of compare the two. And again, it's just rewritten. It's, it's, uh, not dramatically different, but it is a little shorter. That's pretty good. But I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna use my favorite version of this. Not that I would ever use this in the real world, but rewrite this thing as a poem. Um, this is surprisingly good, or it can be. Let's see what it says. <laughs> in May, the Qualcomm Surface Pro 10 appeared with Laptop 7. The Copilot Plus was declared. In September, business models joined the fray. 
a new Surface Pro 10 with 5G on display. I mean, that sounds like a Christmas song. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's it's uh, it's not Shakespeare, but it's uh it's not it's not bad. Um, I don't think most people actually want that, but it's it's kind of fun. And you can do other things too. Like we a, we will uh, let me go back to the oh they have different variants. Sorry, that's not what I wanted. But you can go and say, well, I want this as a bulleted list. Um, there's different versions of this, but um, let me just go back. It, this is a surprisingly useful tool. It's bizarre to me that this thing is in um, Notepad, right? So part of the changes to Copilot that I glossed over in a recent episode about the changes to 24H2 is with the new Copilot app, they've gone from a, a, a model where some things were free and some things were paid. And now the things that were paid, everyone can access up to a point for free. So if you click on this, uh, where do you click? Where do I see this? Yeah, here. So you see here, I've got, this says 28. So this is like my AI credit balance at Copilot, right? And so every time I do this, I use a credit, right? So I can't just do this forever and ever. Like eventually they're going to say, hey, uh, you can't use this anymore for the rest of the month. You've run out of credits. Or if you'd like to subscribe for the, you know, the paid version of Copilot. So that's the little upsell. So this gives everyone an opportunity to see something that previously might have required Microsoft Word, Microsoft 365 commercial or consumer, plus a paid version of Copilot. But now you can sample it for free right inside of uh, Notepad, the simplest app on earth, except now suddenly it's not the simplest app on earth. It's kind of incredible. Um, so there you go. That's kind of neat. You may not have that on your computer yet. If you don't, you should have it pretty soon, uh, sometime in the next couple of months. Um, before we go though, I wanted to just share a couple of other tips related to Notepad. I use Notepad every single day. You may recall from the episode we did on uh, Paint a few months back, I think back in October. I also use that app every single day as well. Um, and I've you know, developed my little habits here. So you can right click on the pin here for the app in the taskbar and you see this list of recent documents, which is super useful. This thing here at the top, I use a lot. Um, I use it enough that it's often in this list, but every once in a while it's not. And so what I would have to do before was go, I know where it is. So I can go into my, um, I can go into my, it's in here somewhere. Here we go. I can go into my book folder and find it. So I can go just launch it that way. But uh, you can pin this. This isn't a notepad feature, but it's it's particularly useful for me with notepad because I use it all the time. So you can go to any one of these and just, pin it and it will always be on that list. So even if it runs off the recent list, you'll always have access to it. That's kind of cool. Um, I also mentioned that, uh, to, 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 um, yeah, can I get rid of that thing, um, that by default new tab is the, the method, not new window, right? So for example, if I type control plus N, it does new tab. If I control, control T it does new tab. But what if I actually do want a new window, right? Um, the shortcut is control shift N. And it brings up a new window. So um, I actually just turn it off so it always does new window. But if you want to leave it on the tab interface, it does consume less resources if you use a lot of uh, documents at one time. Um, you can still have a new window if you want it and just do the shortcut. I think, yeah, you can do it from the menu as well. So that's good. Then if you are, I, I don't want to say a Luddite per se, but if you looked at everything that I just showed and said, nope, I don't want anything to do with that. I want a much, much simpler version of this app. You can get it. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but I'm going to show you how against my better judgment. Um, I'm having some settings app issues here, so it's taking a while, but that's okay. So you need to do two, two things. So first you have to go into the Windows System 32 folder. Tick, tick, if I can figure out alphabetical. And then you got to go find the executable for Notepad, which of course is under N. Scroll, scroll, scroll. It's down in here somewhere. Boop. Okay, uh, I went by it. Okay, so here's the old, and you can see this has got that old Windows Vista glass style. So this is this is the old version. Um, now, if I run this, oh, I already fixed it. <laughs> I think I already screwed it up. Um, I, it, if I run this, normally it doesn't do that. It normally it runs the new version, but that's because I went into apps, advanced app settings, and execution aliases, and I already turned it off. So what you do is you come in here and turn this off. So that's why you saw the old version. Normally, if this was on like that, like it is normally, and you ran this, you would see the new version, right? So you turn this off, and then you run this, 
and you get the old version. This is literally the old version. So this is this is dating back to the very early 2000s. Um, you know, the old menu, the big menu, the old font uh, thing, the about box, all this stuff from the past, right? If you want a new, you could you could do a, a new window. Um, there's no tabs, old UI. There's no support for dark mode. This is just straight up Win32 app. Pretty cool. But turning off the alias isn't enough because if you, you know, if you launch Notepad from here, you get the new version. So what you can do is copy uh, a shortcut to wherever. I, I'll put it on the desktop, but... Um, where of course I can't find it because I have a million things. Uh, and then you can see it has the old icon. So you can put this anywhere you want. Um, you could pin it, do whatever with it. But when you run that again, you get the old version of the app. So, um, I don't do that myself, but you know, again, if you were horrified <laughs> by what you saw, um, the old version of Notepad's still in there, you know, it's kind of incredible. Um, that's a, that's the most legacy of legacy apps there is, I think. So there you go, Notepad. Uh, it's not your father's Notepad, I guess, your grandfather's Notepad <laughs> anymore. It's a completely new app. So I hope you found this interesting. We'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can learn more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We love you. And I'll see you next week.